So you want to come over Monday night? I'm going to pick up some power drills, liberate my cabinets. Are you even listening to me? Cabin in the Woods is described as a loving hate letter to the current state of horror, a way of taking jabs at various tropes and cliches within the genre while simultaneously paying homage to them. This video will really only make sense if you've actually seen the movie, so if you haven't, I recommend you check it out and then come back after you've seen it. There's so much in the film I have to break it down into sections. First is the main reference, the title of the film. Cabin in the Woods is a direct reference to the Evil Dead. This is just the first of many Evil Dead references, but I'll get to those later. Next up, let's take a look at the monsters on the board. These are the monsters that all the facility were voting on in the beginning of the film. Some are direct references to other properties, while others are just general horror icons. Werewolf, the classic monster. Alien Beast, a reference to Alien as this facehugger. Mutants, a reference to The Hills Have Eyes. Wraiths, the original 13 ghosts. Zombies, Night of the Living Dead. Reptilicus, a reference to the movie of the same name. Clowns, Pennywise from Stephen King's It. Witches, classic generic monster. Sexy witches of the previous monster, and possibly a goof on something like the witches of Brestwick. Demons, Night of the Demons. Hell Lord, listed in the credits as Fornicus, Lord of Bondage and Pain, a direct reference to Pinhead from Hellraiser. Angry Molesting Tree, The Evil Dead. Giant Snake, classic generic monster. Deadites, another Evil Dead reference. Kevin, listed in the official novel as a good looking guy who seemed like he might work at Best Buy until he dismembers people. Some say it's a reference to Kevin Williamson, the writer of Scream. Others say that it's Elijah Wood's character from Sin City. I think it's possibly just a generic serial killer. Although in the monitors, there is a guy who looks like Patrick Bateman from American Psycho. Mummy, classic generic monster. The Bride, the blood-splattered bride. Scarecrow Folk, Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. Snowman, Jack Frost. Dragon Bat, a reference to the vampires of Blade 2, with the way the bat's mouth opens. Vampires, a reference to Nosferatu. Dismemberment Goblins, either ghoulies or hobgoblins, possibly both. Sugar Plum Fairy, a reference to the bizarre otherworldly designs of Guillermo del Toro. Merman, the creature from the Black Lagoon. Reanimated, Reanimator. Unicorn, generic fantasy monster. Huron, an Indian. Sasquatch Wendigo Yeti, classic generic monster. Dolls, the home invaders from The Strangers. Doctors, the insane doctors from the remake of The House on Haunted Hill. Redneck Torture Family, a combination of zombies and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Jack-o'-lantern, classic generic monster. Giant, another classic generic monster. Twins, the twin girls from The Shining. Now let's talk about the monsters that were not shown on the board. These show up in either the containment cubes or during the purge. Some of these are really hard to see, so I'm showing the green screen shots so you can get a better look at them. The blob is a reference to the blob. Giant tarantula, eight-legged freaks. Killer plant, little shop of horrors. Tentacles, a reference to the movie Tentacles about a giant octopus. Robot scorpion, either a reference to the movie Virus or Killbots, aka Chopping Mall. Giant woman, a reference to Attack of the 50-Foot Woman. Killer garden gnome, the KKK, the suffocators. Cyclops, Giant Centipede, Angry Wild Dogs, and a Reaver from Joss Whedon's show Firefly. There's a few video game references as well. There's Alma from the video game series Fear. Patience Buckner is played by Judell Furland, who played Alessa in the movie version of Silent Hill. The painting is possibly a reference to the Slender Man. In the containment cubes, you see four main infected boss characters from the video game series Left 4 Dead. The Boomer, Hunter, Tank, and Witch. Originally, there was supposed to be a Left 4 Dead tie-in with the movie, which fell through when MGM went bankrupt. The level was going to be the cabin surface, and then the underground bunker. Since the movie needed to fill in all these cubes, they left the monsters in there. Now let's take a look at the artifacts. These are the items in the basement that awaken the corresponding monster. Even though the prop department made an artifact for each monster, not all of them are visible in the movie. I'm showing a few of the ones from the behind the scenes footage because they're really cool. The music box, the sugar plum fairy, the necklace, the bride, Roberto the limbless man, the floating head, dolls and masks, the dolls, the drums, Huron, the Puzzle Sphere, the Hell Lord, the Conch Shell, the Merman, Ceremonial Dagger, the Mummy, Jack-o'-lanterns, the Jack-o'-lantern, Telescope, the Blob, Gas Mask, the Mutants, 
There's even supposed to be a tape recorder down here, but I couldn't find it. They frequently show the film strip, but the only thing I could think that might possibly correspond with it would be Kevin. It's not the ring, because that's a Japanese ritual. There was a bunch of references beyond the monsters. The camper was a reference to The Hills Have Eyes. Jules dancing by the fire is eerily similar to Willow's dance in the original Wicker Man. The redneck torture family uses a regular saw instead of a chainsaw. The diary is a reference to the Necronomicon from The Evil Dead. The cellar door, another Evil Dead reference. The Harbinger. The creepy gas attendant from almost every horror movie, there to warn the group of their impending doom. The one Buckner tilts his head slowly, like Michael Myers from Halloween. The voices are a reference to the Amityville Horror. The containment cubes are a reference to the movie Cube. The character Truman is a reference to The Truman Show, about a guy whose whole life is being controlled by outside forces. The directors, Sitterson and Hadley, are supposed to be writer-directors Joss Whedon and Drew Goddard. In other countries, there were failed rituals. Buenos Aires, a reference to King Kong. Japan, a reference to Ringu. Stockholm, a reference to The Thing. Madrid looks like they're burning down Dracula's castle, as a nod to the old Hammer horror films. The foot of Reptilicus steps into frame, like one of the dinosaurs of Jurassic Park. The line, We are not who we are, is lifted from The X-Files Season 1, Episode 8, Ice. We're not who we are. The movie explains a few horror cliches by showing that they're actually part of the ritual. The fog that Citizen releases is actually pheromones that make the characters do stupid things, such as splitting up, even though they know it's a terrible idea. This is also a way of explaining why horror films are so foggy for no reason. In every horror movie, someone always uses a weapon once and then drops it for no reason. The movie explains that by showing Dana using a knife once, and then Citizen flips a switch, which gives her a little electric jolt, making her drop the weapon. <laughs> Oh, these fucking zombies. Remember when you could just throw a girl in a volcano? How old do you think I am? In the beginning, Sitterson and Hadley reference a failed ritual from 1998. The ritual failed because of the chemistry department. This is a reference to the movie The Faculty. All the archetypes are present, none of them died, and they fought the aliens off with a batch of homemade drugs. The purge button was a reference to that magical MacGuffin, that one super easy thing that happens to make everything go right or wrong depending on the story. The lady in the camera that kills herself is very similar to a scene from Joss Whedon's Serenity. After they think Marty was killed, the ground shakes because he was killed off screen. In a horror movie, if someone is killed off camera, it almost always means that they'll come back later because they weren't actually killed. This angered the gods. That leads me to the final thing, the Ancient Ones. Who are the Ancient Ones? Us. The audience. Year after year, we go to see the same horror movies with the same archetypes doing the same things. We want blood, nudity, stoner humor, and a final girl. If all these things are met, the audience is pleased. If not, the audience gets angry and trashes the film. A good example is Halloween 3. They veered away from the Michael Myers storyline, and audiences threw a fit until the character came back in Halloween 4 which was good, but it really was more of the same. Cabin in the Woods was made to show that all of these cliches have been done to death, and by the Ancient Ones destroying everything, it's to wipe the slate clean and start over with new fresh ideas. While I don't think the long-running horror staples need to be put away permanently, rebooting things like Friday the 13th and The Nightmare on Elm Street is not the answer. We need a nice new influx of incredibly creative ideas that are out there, but unfortunately are often being overlooked. Also, Bennett doesn't know it by heart, so he'll think you're insightful. <laughs> and you have no pants. Oh! Hey everyone, I just want to remind you, I have a Patreon set up. Uh, if you like the show and would like to help keep me going, even a dollar a month would make a difference. I would really appreciate it. I've got some cool rewards set up, so check it out. Thanks a lot.